half the people left, all the I guess the dancers and things left. And we were yeah. just waiting. She's like, and get out of my like picture. <laughs> I don't make good. So I wanted to show you guys uh, last night when we first got here with the family, I did a shot of this and it's basically beavers, anal gland stuff. <laughs> it <was> delicious. <laughs> We're basically walking around this old medieval town, like rubbles, and there's moats left over. Obviously, there's no water in them anymore. There's all of this architecture kind of crumbling and falling around, but it's very reminiscent of what used to be here and how this used to protect um, the city basically from intruders because of all the water. There's a lake over there and stuff like that, so it's really cool. It's raining right now, <laughs> but very interesting place. just drove for three hours and we're taking a walk in the rain <laughs> through the woods up to this lookout point tower and I'll show you guys what it looks like when we get up there so we made it to the top of the tower and it's basically like a lookout point over oh so cold over Isaku and then basically in this direction you can't see it because it's really foggy I'll show you this Basically out this way, there's um, there's a lake. And it's like the lake that separates Estonia from Russia. So right on the other side of the lake, which is too foggy so you can't see, is Russia, which is very interesting. So let me just show you. So basically like right out there. And then over here is Izaku. Very beautiful. It's a look. <laughs> so <laughs> we look in like a bunch of ugly. So we're in my Vanaisa's hometown now. I forget what it's called. But we're basically going to see his old house. It's still here, although somebody else owns the property now and lives here. And this is where, during the war, he hid under the floorboard with his friend for two weeks. bugs <laughs> but this is basically where his um, farm used to be I was here when I was 11 and I have a picture from inside so if you see under the window here it's in the block right? yeah, okay. oh, it's a little um, those first few floorboards opened up under the door there and that's where they crawled in and then there was like a foot of space under the floorboards under there. that's crazy and that's where they hid for two weeks. Look, there's an old sleigh here. Like a, yeah. you know, it's a wood sleigh or... And when I 
was here 15 years ago, right there is where this old Russian lady kicked me in the ass because I dropped something on her window and I tried to get it down, um, but I had hit her window. I was trying to get it. So she came outside and literally kicked me in the ass with pointy shoes. And all my cousins still remember it and they tell that story to everybody. And I had this huge black bruise for weeks and weeks after. Uh, this is like a very Soviet area in terms of the architecture and kind of the vibe it still gives off and a lot of Russians live here so it's a really big Russian community so although Estonian is still the official language everything is also in Russian yeah that's where I got kicked in the ass So basically, this is a map of Estonia, and in each province or area, there is a death toll for the amount of people who died during the Soviet reign here. And these are only the people who were accounted for. This doesn't include all the people who they didn't have records of, but one of them in Dalin is 17,000 people who died that they could count. And so this is just like a memorial to all those people and up further here there's another memorial to a community who has no grave and it's basically just to recognize that these people died it says that these people died for no reason there was no reason for their death just because the soviet people could and wanted to they killed them and lots of them were children i think it says 19 of them were children and about 300 of them died so they don't know who they are there's no records of them and so this here is a memorial for them let me show you this here is their memorial to mark their basically lives here and then over here is another map of estonia in this map it shows where they planted the oak trees to um, commemorate or remember these people and these events that happened, like I said earlier. That's how they celebrate things here, they plant a tree. So, let me show you guys. Child's trying to eat. So our cousin's taking us for a ride in his army jeep, basically, which he uses for hunting in the woods. <laughs> and I was on this um, when I was here, when I was 11. And the back door here was open. And the dogs were chasing after us, and I was like narrating the whole thing like we were in a race. <laughs> Yeah, it is focusing some of the sounds. <laughs> Robert chilling inside. Oh my god, this is so cool. You sit in it and you listen to the sound of the forest. Tell me what you hear. Do you hear anything? <laughs> she hears nothing.
currently sitting in a sauna sweating i don't know how i'm gonna be able to go back to canada honestly but i'm honestly just so grateful for my family that i have here knowing that two parts of the same family live in like two separate countries it's it's really cool and and hopefully that um some of my cousins will be able to come to canada so grateful for everyone i don't really know what else to say i really appreciate all the love and support and i'll catch you guys in the next video that's basically it i am gonna continue to sit here and sweat and make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you all in the next video <sighs> bye guys <laughs>